Thank you. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is a true self of your God? I do. All right, could you um, step in, have a seat, and then would you state your name for the record and spell your first name? So. Adam Stoyak, A D A M S T O Y E K. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir, how are you employed? I'm a detective with the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been with the Sheriff's Office? Just under 12 years. Okay. How long have you been a detective? Uh, just under four years. Uh, where exactly is your, um, well, that's a bad question. You're a detective, but what substation? I'm assigned to the city of Pontiac. Okay, so you work out of the Pontiac substation? Correct. Okay. And so what sort of things do you do there? Uh, investigate uh, crime reports that come in on a daily basis. Um, we have periods of being on call, uh, investigating anything from homicides, assaults, things like that. Okay. Now, prior to being a detective, what did you do? Uh, I spent some time in the corrections division. I was in the uh, courthouse, um, went to road patrol where I worked in Pontiac, different shifts in Pontiac. I was a school resource officer in Pontiac for a short period, and then um, I got moved up to the detective bureau about four years ago. All right. Now, I'd like to direct your attention to November the 30th, 2021. Do you recall that day? I do. Were you working? I was. Uh, were you made aware of the shooting at the Oxford High School that day? I was. And tell us please, where were you when you were made aware of that shooting? I was at the uh, Pontiac substation at my desk. Okay. And how was it that you came to learn about the shooting? I had the uh, my computer screen up, which had all the uh, pending and active uh, sheriff's office calls in the county. And I actually saw the, uh, <clears throat> the call at the school go up on the uh, pending calls on the screen. And I read it. Okay. What, what do you mean by that? You saw it up on the pending call on the screen. So yeah, it has like the active calls going on within the sheriff's department, and then on the bottom it will have like calls that haven't been dispatched yet. And I saw the one at the high school go out, and I read what uh, about the multiple calls that was going on at the high school. Um, and I alerted the rest of the uh, detectives of what was going on at the high school, and we all responded. Okay, we say we all responded. Tell me what happened, please. Uh, initially, when we got there, it was still pretty active. So uh, my partner and I kind of linked up with uh, a couple different guys, and we were. Uh, searching classrooms. Um, some of the classrooms were still occupied by students, um, assisted with escorting them out of the school. Um, eventually they called everybody at the front of the school and we were tasked with um, searching certain classrooms. Okay. And we did that. Now what specific area of the school did you go to to, to clear? Um, initially we went towards uh, where the gymnasium was, um, towards the cafeteria and the gymnasium, which I believe is on the southwest corner of the school. Okay. You said some of the, the, the classrooms were still occupied? Correct. Occupied by whom? Uh, students and teachers. Okay. So tell us how the, how the process worked to clear these rooms. Yeah, so in, in a couple of the classrooms, the teachers were kind of initially hesitant to open the door. Um, kind of had to go back and forth with them explaining that we were the police. And eventually they did open the door. Um, there wasn't really a whole lot of words exchanged. Everybody just kind of looked at you and didn't really just kind of listen to what you told them to do. Uh, they were excuse me, escorted out of the school, and we would clear the classroom to make sure there's nobody else in the classroom. Okay. And you said at, at some point while you were on scene, you were redirected to the, the office area of the school? Yeah, they had like a command post kind of started in the front of the school and okay. redirected there. And tell me what happened next. Um, command officers were having us link up in teams, and they would give us specific uh, classrooms to go search just to make sure that the classrooms were uh, unoccupied and there was no one else inside of them. Okay. And, and you did that assignment? Correct. Okay. At some point, were you tasked with um, going to 112 East Street in Oxford? Yeah, at some point after we cleared the classroom, Lieutenant Hicks um, gathered a few of the Pontiac detectives and we were told to go to 112 East Street and secure the residence prior to a uh, search warrant being drafted. <coughs> so why were you directed to that specific residence? That was the uh, residence of Jennifer and James Crumley. And so I take it at that point in time, the school shooter was in custody? Correct. And officers had learned his identity, where he resided, and who his parents were? Correct. Okay. So did you go there? I did. Um, at that point in time, did you know what you were going to find there? No. Okay. So did you have any information if there were going to be other, other casualties or anything else going on? No, so at that time we didn't know if the house was going to be occupied or, yeah, we didn't really have a clue what we were going into. Okay. Um, who did you go there with? Uh, my partner, Detective McPherson. Any other officers? Uh, Detective Peschke at the time, uh, Detective Steele, um, Deputy Zajac was there, Deputy Mozak. Um, I think 
eventually Agent Brandon came to. Okay. Uh, from the ATF? Correct. Okay. Um, so you're a detective on that day. Are you wearing plain clothes or uniform? Plain clothes. So were some of the officers uniform? Correct. Okay. Um, so tell us what you see when you arrive, please. Uh, when I got there, the uh, James and Jennifer were being escorted out of the house by, by deputies. Okay. And tell me what what's at this location? Is it a single, fa single family residence? Is it a multi-unit dwelling? Yeah, it's a single family residence. Okay. So you told us that you went there to secure the scene pending search warrant. What does that mean? Yeah, so you'll go there just to um, do an initial sweep of the residence, make sure no one's inside. Um, you don't want anybody coming inside, obviously. It's more of a preservation of evidence thing to make sure that nothing gets taken from the house prior to the search warrant being completed. Okay, is that something that occurs in every case with a search warrant? Yeah, generally, correct. Okay. Now, search warrant, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's authorization from a judge or magistrate to enter a person's dwelling and to see certain items. Correct. Okay. And is your understanding that the search warrant was being obtained for that location? Yes. So when you enter a, a dwelling to secure it, do you actually search at that point? Prior to the search warrant? Correct. Yeah, you're just kind of doing an initial sweep to make sure you know no one's hiding inside, there's no, uh, no one inside that's not supposed to be, um, and just holding the house until you get the search warrant. Okay, so your focus is looking for other individuals, but not for items. Yeah, I mean, you're looking for individuals, but I mean, obviously, if there's things in plain sight, you're still observing things. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you what's been admitted and judged so the court is clear as well as defense counsel. Every exhibit we have on here, we've already gone through, and okay. the court has already ruled to be admissible. That's what we did last night when you went through that stuff. So. All right. So this is exhibit 161. Can you see that on your screen? I can. Okay, so what is this that I'm, I'm sorry, 162. 162, thank you. Um, what am I showing you right here? It looks like that'd be a uh, sketch or a drawing of 112 East Street. Okay, so this is uh, a sketch of the home if you were looking down on it, that'd be right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So would you call this a, a small home or a large home? It's a fairly small home. Okay. I'm going to move on here to 164. First of all, tell us how many bedrooms were in this home? Uh, there was three bedrooms and a bathroom and then a, uh, a basement as well. All right, so going back to 162. <coughs> and these are all admitted. Right. Correct, Judge. Yes, pursuant to prior court rulings or stipulation. Okay. So if you could show us, please, um, tell us about the layout. So tell us where the front door is. I see that at the top of the, the drawing there. Is that correct? Yeah, towards where the sheriff's office. And when you can kind of see the indentation, which would be the front door. Okay. And the front door opens to a living room and dining room? Yep, correct. You walk in, there is a living room to the right. Um, to the left is kind of a smaller dining room. Um, you walk in to the kitchen, which is visible there. Um, just off the kitchen, there's a small hallway. A uh, bedroom to the right, uh, bathroom straight ahead, then another bedroom. You walk down that small hallway, it looks like there's a, I believe there's a, it says washer and dryer. Um, that would lead you into the master bedroom. Um, off the master bedroom, there's the backyard. And then off the master bedroom near where it says washer and dryer were the stairs to the basement. Okay. So when we're saying master master bedroom, is this a um, a room that was added onto the home? Or did, was it naturally the master bedroom? What was your impression of it when you went there? Um, yeah, so to me it was the master bedroom. It, um, it looks like it had adult clothing in it. Um, it had a king bed. It had just more stuff in it. It was clear to me that that was the adult's bedroom. Okay, and you obtained information uh, who's, what individual stayed in which rooms prior, prior to entering? Or Correct. At least prior to um, executing the search warrant. Correct. Okay. So let us know as we go through some of these pictures if you need to refer back to this. Okay. To that. okay. So here's 164. So did you learn if the shooter had one bedroom or two bedrooms? Two bedrooms. Okay. And so which bedroom is this that we're looking at? So when you come in off the kitchen, there was the hallway, um, there was a bedroom to the right, there was a bathroom straight ahead, this would have been the bedroom to the left, okay. immediate left in the hallway. So photographs are generally taken when a search warrant is executed, is that right? Correct. Are those photographs taken before or after things are disturbed? 
It kind of depends on if someone at the scene is able to take pictures before, if there's an evidence technician. Okay. Um, generally, before you go in and search, it would be there'd be pictures taken. In this case, see. there was an evidence tech available, correct. is that correct? Correct. Okay, that was Detective Vizio, I believe? Correct. Okay, so these pictures were taken before the search was executed? Yes. So for lack of a better term, this is the natural state of the home as you found it November the 30th? Correct. Okay. So what are we looking at here in this photograph, Exhibit 164? Yeah, so this, uh, this was... I was made aware this was the shooter's bedroom. Um, the bed was covered with various things. There's some school books on it. Uh, there was targets visible on the wall that had, <coughs> it was apparent to be full of holes in them. Um, okay, I'm gonna do another angle here. This is 165, this is the same bedroom? Correct. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Yeah, so that was, he had a, or the shooter had a dresser, it looked like TV. There was things all over the floor. Um, there was things all over the place, really. Okay. So that boarded up window in the back, that it was adjacent to the master bedroom, right? Correct. Okay. And so the picture that we just looked at with the targets on the wall, that would be if, if you were taking this picture behind you? Yes. Okay. Were you able to tell if why that window was <coughs> boarded up? Yeah, you know what? I, I, I don't know why that was boarded up. I was okay. never made aware why that was boarded up. And that led to the master bedroom, is correct? I would believe so. Okay. That would, yeah, that would lead to the master bedroom. So Your this Honor, is one... I'm sorry to interrupt. I would have no objection for the prosecutor to just say what, <coughs> why that's boarded like that, just so it's clear for the jury, so I don't have to go back to it. We don't I don't have know if he knows. Oh, I, I asked him. <laughs> <it. laughs> Does that look like Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying yeah. that he could, Mr. Keyes could say it if he wanted to. Okay, he doesn't, the witness doesn't know, though. So. Okay. So, okay, this is 166, this is the same bedroom? Correct. Okay, just a different angle? Yes. Okay. And 167 is also the same bedroom, the other angle? Yep. Okay. This was identified as one of the shooter's bedrooms? Correct. 168, same bedroom? Correct. And 169, this is the same bedroom as well, this is the closet in that room? Yes. And this is 171, just a different angle from that closet? Correct. Okay, 172, are these the targets that we saw initially in Exhibit 164? Yes. Okay, and have these targets been used or unused? Yeah, they appear to be used. Okay, that's 172. Uh, 173, this is just further down the wall with one of the two targets? Yes. <coughs> this is 174. <coughs> This is another picture. This is of the shooter's bed. Yep. Again, 175, same bedroom. Correct. Now, this is 176. Uh, this is the nightstand in that room. Would that be right? Correct. Okay. Now, 177. So, we had, you had talked about that the shooter was identified to have two bedrooms. Yeah. Okay. Is this the second of the two bedrooms? Yep, so that was the bedroom on the right side of the hallway, just across from the bedroom you were just looking at. Okay. So, again, this photograph was taken before the search warrant was actually executed. Correct. Right. So this 177. This is 178. This is the same bedroom? Yes. 179. This is the closet of that bedroom? Yes. This is 183. This is on the bed of that bedroom. That'd be right? Correct. 184, same bedroom, different angle? Correct. 185, same bedroom, <coughs> this is the TV in that room? Correct. All right, this is 186, again, same room? Yes. This is 188, there was one bathroom in the home? Yep, that was, when you walk in that hallway, bedroom to the right, the bathroom is straight ahead, and the other bedroom is to the left. Okay, and this photograph fairly accurately depicts the condition of the bathroom on November the 30th? It does. Okay, that's 188. Okay, this is 189. Sir, what are we looking at in this photograph? Yeah, so when you'd walk out of that hallway, you'd go down another hallway, and there was what was um, described to me as the master bedroom. Um, when you walked in, that was the bed that was in the bedroom, and there was an open gun box with an empty uh, box of 9 mil 9 millimeter ammunition on the bed. Okay. Now, is this the condition that this gun case and empty box of ammunition were found 
On November the 30th, 2021. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And that's on the master bedroom? Yes. Bed? Yes. This is exhibit 191. This is the same master bedroom. And then the bedroom. <coughs> this is on the nightstand? Correct. This is 192, the same room? Yes. Again, 193, this is also the same room? Correct. And 194, what are we looking at here? So when you walk into the bedroom, immediately to the right of the, the doorway. The master was, bedroom? Yeah, the master okay. bedroom. There's, a, there's an armoire. Okay. 195, this is the same armoire with a slightly different perception? Correct. 196, is this still the room? Yep, so that would be the door that would lead out to the backyard and then a TV stand with various drawers and uh, things in it. Okay. And were these drawers eventually searched? They were. 197, same TV stand? Correct. Okay. 198, it's the same room, just uh, a different angle? Yep. 199, again, same master bedroom? Correct. Okay, this is Exhibit 200. <coughs> Sir, just so we're clear, moving back, Exhibit 197. These drawers were searched? Correct. Okay. Were you actually directed where to go to? I was. Okay. Who directed you? Uh, James Cromwell. Okay. And so specific to the, if we're looking at this photograph, the right drawer, I'm sorry, not drawer, um, you tell me, the, which area did you find what was located here in Exhibit 200? Yeah, so when you're, when you're looking at that picture, to the right um, door there, you open that up and there was two um, shelving, you had shelves on it, and the uh, gun safe was on the top, top okay. shelf. And who, who told you where to, to look for that? James Crumley did. Okay. And that's already been admitted into evidence, and that has a locking mechanism on it? It does. Okay, were you told what the combination is? I was. Objection. Your Honor, just irrelevant to Jennifer's case, if, unless the information came from her. Okay, well... What Je I'm sorry, what James would say is hearsay to this officer, so I would object for that reason. Judge, it's, it's relevant because the um, firearm was found in the defendant's home, shared home, okay. and it but, but shows that, how that, the officer opened the, the case and recovered other weapons in the, in the trial. Your Honor, okay, the objection... What he said is hearsay. So you had a conversation with James Conway. Yeah. And then you... Found that case and opened it. Correct. Okay. And Judge, I'm sorry, she also testified, or she also said in her statement to the officer yesterday, Joe Bryan, in the interview that was admitted as evidence that she knew where the fire was found. And later no, on she, today. Your Honor, she did not say that. Like, she did not say that in the video. <laughs> or she did not talk about these firearms. To, Sergeant Pesky is going to testify later on today. We're going to admit an in car video with Jennifer's. Recordings will be admitted as an exhibit, okay. and she's asked specifically about this. And Your Honor, I would ask that the jury wait until then because I disagree with the prosecution's description of what what that evidence will show. Okay, but he, are, he already testified they had a conversation with James Conley, and then he went to this location, and that he then opened that safe. Yes, isn't that sufficient? That's well. Yeah. How did he open the safe? Is important. I mean, he didn't. Did you have to crack open the safe? I did not. Okay, so. You were given the code to open the safe. Correct. Okay. And were things recovered from that safe? Yes. Okay. So without having to crack open the safe to recover the items, you learned how to open it? I did. Okay. And then how did you open the safe? Your Honor, I object to him saying what the code was because Jennifer Knowledge had no, no awareness of the code, and that's what the prosecution is hoping to slip in here as hearsay that James told this officer. He said he had a conversation with, with James and then he opened the safe. He didn't say that Jennifer gave him the code. Okay. Right? right. Yeah, right. true. True. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So you talked to James Crumbling and he gave you the code for the safe. He did. Okay. And tell us how you got the safe. By using the code that he gave me. And what was it? It was a zero, zero, zero. Okay. And that's the default code, code for that case. Correct. All right. Exhibit 200. Okay. Now this is 201. Um, we're looking at the same drawer here. I keep calling it a drawer. It's better to call it a shelf, right? Yeah, it's, it's okay. more of a shelf. Okay, so we have this um, case that's been admitted into evidence. 
and then it looks like an article of clothing. And then underneath that, what did you find? Uh, it was a, a holster, which is on the right there, and then uh, two magazines, and there was a baggie of bullets in the back. I can't really see it there. Okay. And this is 202. All right. You see two magazines and a baggie of bullets. That wasn't on the shelf when you walked into the bedroom, right? So that's what you pulled out of there? Yeah, so that was rem at that point it had been removed from the shelf and it was placed into the bag. And the magazine was placed on the top of the TV stand back there. So this is 203. Again, this is the locking case, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so tell us what was found in the locking case. So I located a 22 Caltech handgun and then a, a 22 Derringer. Uh, the Caltech's the black handgun and the Derringer is the silver handgun with the brown handle on it and then some ear protection. So this is what it appeared, and this is what it looked like when you opened the case initially? Yes. Okay. Here's 204, what is this? That's the uh, 22 Derringer. It's just a closer room. We already had that in there. Uh, 205 is, is the same firearm, just from a different angle. Correct. Okay, 210, what are we looking at? That's the uh, 22 Caltech that was recovered from the safe. Okay. Uh, 211, this is a close up view of the Derringer. Correct. Okay, 212, when we're going back to one of the shooter's bedrooms, we saw that Packer's helmet in a different photograph. This is a close up view of the nightstand? Correct. Okay, and what are we looking at here? Uh, those would be spent shell casings from uh, fire from a weapon. Okay. And that's the condition in which you observed it on November the 30th, 2021? Correct. I'm sorry, was, was that 212 or 213? 212. Uh, that's 212, Judge. Because we just have a 213 is slightly similar picture. All right, 216. This isn't a real firearm, is it? No, it was a, I believe it was a BB or a pellet gun. It wasn't a. But that's, that's where it was found in the shooter's bedroom on November the 30th, 2021? Yeah, on the uh, computer chair in the shooter's bedroom. Okay, 217, just a slightly different picture. 218, what are we looking at here? Uh, that would be a drawer from the dresser in one of the shooter's bedrooms. 219, same drawer? Correct. Right. 220, what's this? Empty bottle of uh, whiskey next to uh, one of the shooter's beds. Okay. Now, judging by the wall color, would that be the same bedroom that the targets were found? Correct. All right. Here's 221. This is the same bottle of whiskey, correct? Or empty yeah, bottle? just at the end of the bed, just sitting on the floor. Okay. And 222, what is this? I know the notebook that was recovered from one of the, one, I believe, one of the drawers in the bedroom, the bedroom drawers in the bedroom. 223, what is this? There were various, various knives that were found in the bedroom. Okay, where were they found? I believe right on, I think that's on the shell, one of the shelving units in the room. Okay, so in one of the early pictures, earlier pictures we saw a shelving, a wall shelving unit. Would this be a close-up view of that? Correct. Okay. This is 231. Now what's this a picture of? Yes, yeah, so this would be when you, that door would be the front door if you were exiting the residence, um, when you were coming into the residence to your immediate right with the couch, um, that TV was on the wall, which was facing the front of the house. So that was a, a, a view of the living room. Okay, so the door that we see in the right-hand side, that's, that's the front entrance door. Correct. Okay, so this is what you would, when you walk into the house, this is what you walk into? Yes. Okay, that's 231. This is 232, what's this? Same thing, um, when you'd immediately walk into the house, that's what you observe, that's the living room area, the couches, the TV would be just uh, in front of that. Uh, 233? Same thing, just a different view. So this angle would show that hallway, which is observed or straight ahead would lead directly into the kitchen. 234, this is also the living room? Yeah, it's the TV stand. Okay. Okay, 235, what are we looking at here? So that's the, um, Kitchen had an island. Um, underneath the island, there was various uh, drawers that you could open up, or um, or shelving units and stuff. That was a box for the 22 Caltech that was recovered in the master bedroom. Okay, and that's that's an evidence as well. Um, 236 is just a different angle view of where that Caltech box was found. Correct. Okay, was the Caltech box opened? It was. Okay, what was found in there? Uh, when I opened the Caltech box, it was a a secured. Uh, Cable lock for a firearm okay. was in the packaging, so. 
So 237 is just the side view of that Caltech uh, box you found? Correct. And 238, you said it was still in the packaging. Is this how it was found? That's how it was found. In fact, there's still keys in that locking mechanism, is that right? Yeah, there was key, the keys were at the uh, end of there, towards the bottom of the lock. Like where it looks like a black box there? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And that's also in evidence. That's 238. Uh, 239, uh, what's this a picture of? I believe that's a, a, a PlayStation unit or a gaming system that was recovered from the okay. residence. So then um, things from the uh, currently home, such as uh, video games, proceeds as well? Correct. The gaming system, okay. So here's 242 with some of those. Correct. 243 with more. Correct. And 244 as well. Okay. Were the vehicles searched as well? They were. Okay. What are we looking at here? That was the back of, about, I believe it was the great Kia that was searched in the driveway. Okay. That's, that's 245. Uh, 246, this is the same vehicle, uh, just a different angle of that hatchback? Correct. Uh, this is 248. Um, okay, so there was no garage at this home, is that right? No, there was a behind the home or adjacent to the home. It was more like a shed that was behind the house. Okay. Was there like a, a, um, an overhang type area um, where a barbecue grill is at? Yeah. Okay, so 248, is that to pick that? Yeah, correct. And, and what are we looking at here? Yeah, so those would be BBs for a BB gun. Um, which, which ones are you looking at? Looks like a plastic container. Okay. Yep. And then it looks like there's more in the uh, in the which would be the original plastic container. Um, some nails. I'm not sure. That looks like that's probably something you use to clean the grill next to it. Okay. So this is now going to be 253. You said there was a shed. Correct. Okay. And so the shed was searched as well. It was. Okay. So what are we looking at here in Exhibit 253? So that'd be immediately when you walk into the shed to the right. Um, there was multiple uh, shotgun style BB guns located. Okay, 253 depicts one of those? Yeah, correct. Okay, here's 254. What is that? Yeah, same thing. So that was when you walk in, there was a, uh, in the shed, there was like a um, tool bench. On the tool bench, uh, <coughs> visible was another like Uzi style BB gun that was visible on the, on the bench right when you walked in. Okay. 255, what are we looking at here? Yeah, same thing. It was a, uh, Another, I believe it was a BB or pellet gun um, that was also located kind of behind the uh, original picture where the Uzi style gun was, or BB gun was. Uh, 256, tell us about this picture. So that would be when you'd walk into the, into the shed. It was, uh, there were some chairs on the ground. Um, you can see behind it where like the shelving unit is. Um, yeah, just some chairs where some, it looks like somebody had been sitting in the shed. Okay. Uh, 268, tell us what we're looking at. Kind of hard to tell, but you can see the silver in the uh, snow there. Uh, it was empty CO2 cartridges. Were they were there just one empty CO2 cartridges or multiple? I believe there, yeah, there's multiple. You can see, if you, it's kind of hard to see, but there's multiple in the there's snow there. There's 269, this is a better view. Yeah, there's multiple in the snow. Okay. Do you know what those are used for? Yeah, for the BB guns or the, the pellet guns at the inside of the, uh, of the shed. Okay, now a second search warrant was executed at 112 East. Is that true? Correct. Okay. So this is obviously what we were looking at before. It was at night. That was um, the evening of November the 30th, 2021. This is the daytime. So anytime you see daylight, that would be the second search warrant. Correct. Is that right? Okay. So just the front of the house, um, Exhibit 272? Yep, correct. That would be the front of the house facing East Street. Okay. And this is 278. Um, this is when you walk into the home, oriented to the left. Yeah, so you'd walk in um, to the right of this picture would be where we saw the couches and the TV. Uh, this would be to the left, you can see the dining room area, and then kind of straight through that picture would be directly into the kitchen. Okay, and those boxes, they weren't in the home November the 30th, 2021. Do you know if they were left on the porch or do you not know? I'm unaware of those were okay. put in the house. 
So here's 279. Is this standing as you walk in, turn to the left? Yep, so you walk into the left, and that was kind of like the uh, dining room area with the uh, table and the uh, various Christmas decorations. Okay. Uh, this is 280. What are we looking at here? Yep, so that would be if you'd be walking through living room with the, or living room with the couches on your right, dining room on the left, and then straight ahead uh, is the kitchen, and where you can see the open door at the end of the very end of the hallway, that's the uh, master bedroom. Okay, so earlier you testified that the Caltech box was in the kitchen island. Do you see the kitchen island in this picture? Correct. Where is it at? So you can see it with the, uh, it's got like the white um, board on it, the white board with the, uh, the top. It looks like there's a uh, binder, the black binder would be the top of the uh, kitchen island. Okay, so here's 281, is that the kitchen island we're referring to? Correct. All right. Now this is also the kitchen, 282? Correct. Uh, 283, the kitchen as well, this is the refrigerator? Correct. Uh, 284, this is the island as well? Yeah, so those two open, the two, at the bottom of the island there, you can see the two drawer, or doors. That's where the, at the bottom of that was a open area where the Caltech gun, gun box was recovered from. Okay, so on the bottom right of the screen? Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, 285, um, this is also of the kitchen? Correct. Okay, so the last picture was orange to the left, this would be orange to the right? Correct, yep, would be, on the outside of that would be where the driveway was, this side of the house. The 286, what are we looking at here? Yep, so when you were in the kitchen, I kind of described it earlier, you take a right, and there's a small hallway, um, at the end of the hallway was that bathroom, to the right was uh, one of the shooter's bedrooms, and immediately across the hallway to the left was the second bedroom. Uh, this is 287, what do we see here? Yep, so that'd be the first bedroom to the right, um, had the bigger bed in it from the earlier pictures. Um, all right. 288. <laughs> now, this is after the initial search was executed. Yeah, this was, this was done the next day, different after the home had already been searched by okay. detectives. 289, this would be identified as a shooter's second bedroom? Correct. Okay. Uh, 290, same bedroom, different view? Correct. What do we see to the left of the bed there, the shooter's bedroom? Um, are we referring to the the stand kind of to the left of the bed there? On the ground. Um, looks like a Gatorade bottle. Um, Was there a litter box on the ground? Yeah, I had a litter, a litter box, yeah. That's 290. 291, this is the same bedroom, now looking towards the closet and the door? Correct. Here's 293. This is down the hall looking at his, what we refer to as his first bedroom. Yeah, just directly across the hall was the, was the first bedroom. Okay, 296. This is the room with the boarded window. Correct. Uh, from the hallway? Correct. 297, again, this is after the initial search warrant was executed. Correct. 300. What are we, look, what are we looking at here? Yeah, so this would be if you were standing directly in the kitchen, you look down, there was a small hallway, a narrow hallway with a uh, washing machine, drying machine on your left, which you can see, and then walking straight ahead is to the entrance of the master bedroom and the sliding glass door that would lead to the backyard. And 301, you identified earlier the washer dryer unit, is this what you're referring to? Correct. Okay. Uh, 302, what's this? Yeah, so you, when you were walking from the original picture, you saw the washer and dryer um, to the left of the washer, and prior to getting to the washer and dryer to the left was a small little hallway that was filled with uh, various items, and that was, what you're looking at right there is kind of like the landing leading to the basement. Okay. We just have a few more to get through. 303, what are we looking at here? That's the entrance to the master bedroom. To the master bedroom, okay. Uh, 304, this is taken in the master bedroom. So the TV stand is to the <coughs> left of this picture? Correct. And that's where the Caltech and Derringer were found? Yep, you're looking at that TV there. It was in one of the uh, open doors. You can kind of see that door open. On the right side of that was where the, uh, the safe was found with the weapons in it. Okay. 305, this is also the master bedroom? Correct, if you came into the right, it was a, I believe it was a king size bed and then a couple of uh, end tables next to the bed. And here's 306, what are we looking at here? 
Similar to you, uh, to the right was that armoire, which you would see when you'd walk in to your immediate right when you came into the bedroom. Um, just a different angle of the bed with the armoire. And here's 307. If, if you were uh, kind of sitting on the bed, you'd be looking at the TV uh, with the TV stand. The door in the bottom right there, that semi ajar, was where the uh, safe was. Okay. The in it. And here's 308. What are we looking at? So 308 would be what I referred to. I believe that's to the landing area that leads to the basement. Okay, this is a different three It's a landing area that leads to the basement. Uh, here's 316. So we had already looked at the picture of the barbecue grill. Um, you identified that there was no garage but a shed. Where would be the shed in this? In this area here. Yes, yeah, so this would be if you, where that door or the landing was. You'd walk out, and there was this little air, area with an overhang with a grill that's visible there. If you were to walk straight past that grill into the yard there to your left, would be the shed. Okay. And here's that 317. What are we looking at here? Yeah, this is more of the uh, overhang area there. Kind of adjacent to the side of the house. November the 30th, when you first entered the home to secure the home for the search warrant, were you aware if the stone, stove was on or off? Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't recall. Okay. That's our other officers are here. Okay. <coughs> Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Um, initially, when you got to the house, you said other officers had already arrived there, correct? Correct. Um, what was the what was happening with Jennifer the first time you saw her? Um, she was being hailed out of the house by another detective. By hailed, I mean being told to come out of the house. Um, and at the time, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, she I, complied and came out. She complied and came out. Yeah. Um, at the time when she was coming out of the house, uh, being hailed out, she was on her cell phone. Is that fair? You know, so when I got there, I, I don't recall exactly what she was doing when she came out of the house. I just got there as she was walking out of the house. I don't recall if she was on her cell phone. While she was walking out of the house, there were guns drawn. There were guns drawn, correct? Correct. How many police officers had guns drawn towards Jennifer Crumbly as she walked out of the house? I couldn't say for certain. When I got there, she was already being um, told to come out of the house. So at the time, I wasn't really focused on who had their guns out. I was focused on watching the house and making sure nobody else came out. So I, I couldn't say how many people had their weapons drawn. Would it be fair to say there was? it was more than one gun? Yeah, correct. More than three? <coughs> um, yeah, there was multiple detectives and officers there when I got there. Um, again, I don't know how many of them had their guns drawn. I know that I had my gun drawn. Uh, you so did have yours drawn? Correct. And pointed at Mrs. Crumbly? No, so when I got there, um, she was already coming out of the house. I was, like I said, I was more focused on, I, I believe I was near a tree on the side of the house. So at that time, I don't think I had my gun pointed at her or not. After Mrs. Crumbly came out of the house and she did come out, correct? Correct. She was handcuffed. So I didn't take part in her. Um, being taken to the vehicle, so I, I, I'm not sure if she was handcuffed. And that's fine, I, I'll ask a different witness then. So after you got to the house, you saw her come out, saw the guns drawn, You did you see Jennifer Crumbly any further that day um, when you were in the house or otherwise? Um, after we had executed the search warrant, she was brought back into the house uh, with James and I saw her inside of the house. I didn't have any communication, further communication with her, no. I just want to be clear about the guns and gun cases, boxes, some of the things we saw on the screen. If you need me to put an exhibit back up, let me know. Okay. Okay. So the Sig Sauer 9mm gun, that the case for that gun, you saw 
in the master bedroom, open on the bed, correct? Correct. And there was a box of bullets, or an empty box of bullets, next to that empty case, correct? Correct. In that case, uh, the gun was not there. Nope. When I initially came into the house and then we conducted the search warrant, it was an empty box. And you know, and if you're not the right witness, let me know, that James Crumbly had gone to the house and discovered the Sig Sauer was gone from the house. Yeah, so when I went to the house, I had no knowledge of anything that had occurred prior to me getting to the house. Um, like I said, I just observed the box where I saw it initially when I did the search and then after. I don't know how it was placed there or when it was. So when you were, I just want to be clear, the Sig Sauer was ultimately not in the Crumbly home. Correct. The Keltec and the Derringer were found in the Crumbly home. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Correct. They were found in a gun safe. Correct. And they were found in the gun safe that was in the cabinet in their bedroom. Correct. And there was not ammunition stored with the Caltech or Derringer. Yeah, so the safe, which we saw the picture, pictures of, had the two uh, firearms and some ear protection. There was ammunition found um, in that same dresser area behind it. Okay, but not in the same, not, not within the, uh, locate, the exact location of the safe, correct? Yeah, it was behind, so I can show you the picture. You can kind of see the picture. The picture has the safe, and then behind the safe, or there was some clothing, and underneath the safe there was the two uh, uh, magazines, there was the uh, gun holster, and then behind that you can kind of see a box. With the, that did have ammunition. I don't. I don't recall what kind of ammunition or how much, but there was some located in the bedroom. Okay, and that's ammunition that goes with those two guns, not the Sig Sauer. Yeah. So the ammunition that was the empty box on the bed was nine millimeter. I mean, to be honest, I don't recall what um, ammunition was found behind the the safe, but there was ammunition found on the safe, behind the safe. Okay, and then I just want to be clear about one other thing. So there was a. A kitchen cap closet we saw where there was like a blender and some other appliances kind of on the floor. You testified that you found the, the box to the Caltech in that little kitchen area. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, correct. And that box was in, while that box was in there, there was no gun in the box um, or anything along those lines. Nope, it was uh, the Caltech box just had that uh, cable lock which was in the bag. That was all that was in there. So the three guns that Jennifer Crumbly and James Crumbly had in their home, um, well, the three that we've talked about include the Sig Sauer, the Caltech, and the Derringer. It's fair to say there were not any other guns in the home aside from BB guns or pellet guns. Yeah, so I located the 22 Derringer, the, the 22 Caltech, and then obviously the uh, firearm, the six hours recovered at school, and I didn't have any part in the uh, recovery of the actual weapon used. Well, to me, it looks like they've got a lot of guns, but I can't tell the difference between a BB gun and something else. So I just want to be sure, aside from knowing about the six hour at the school mm -hmm. and the Caltech Dar mm -hmm. and the Derringer, mm -hmm. all the other guns that we saw in the pictures, though, those were BB guns or pellet guns. Correct. And the Casings that we saw on the ground in the snow, those were from BB guns or pellet guns. Yeah, so the CO2 would be used to operate the, some of the BB guns that were found in either the shed or the bedroom. And in the backyard, you could tell that they had shot BB guns there before because there's also targets up, correct? Um, I recall the, the BBs that were located. There was the empty CO2 cartridges, which would indicate um, that they were used. I don't, I don't recall specific targets in the backyard, but I do recall the other things there. And then when you were testifying, there was very brief testimony that there was a litter box. That was in the second bedroom of the Crumbly Sun, correct? Yeah, when you, when you walk to the right and left was bedrooms, that was the bedroom to the immediate right, and right next to that was the bathroom, and across the hall was the, what I think we described as the first bedroom. And just very quickly, um, when you were executing the first warrant, the Crumblies had a dog in the house. Yeah, there, there was a dog in the house. I didn't have any dealings with the dog. I believe the, the uniformed officers went to the house first, and they 
I think the dog, the dog was friendly, so we didn't have any issues with the dog. And then there was a cat and a kitten. Do you recall that? And if you don't, that's yeah, okay. I don't recall the cat and the kitten. Okay, I have nothing further. Here you go ahead. Uh, just briefly. Uh, Detective, why did you approach the home with guns drawn? Yeah, so I mean, again, we didn't have a whole lot of information about what we were going into. I mean, obviously we had just come from the scene of a shooting. Um, yeah. So the information you were given, well, you knew that there was a, a mass casualty event at Oxford High School. Correct. And you found you out. Better, I would just object to the leading questions. Just trying to orient the witness to where he was and why. I'll take that. Yeah, uh, question and answer, please. Okay. So you had already been at the Oxford High School? Correct. Okay. And you knew what had happened there? Correct. Your Honor, okay. I would object to the leading. Well, it, 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 that was a yes or no. Did he already know what had happened at Oxford High School? That would certainly affect whether or not he approached a house with his gun drawn. Right? And the assignment to secure 112 East, you told us that you were given an assignment by Lieutenant Hicks? Correct. Okay. And at that time, did you know what you were going to find there? No. And what information did you have at that point? Um, that the uh, shooter resided there um, and to go to the house and secure the house prior to the search warrant being drafted. There, there wasn't a whole lot of information given at the time. It was Everything was kind of quick moving at that moment. Okay. Now this is Exhibit 200 on the screen here. You were asked about the 22 ammunition. Um, so in that locking case with the... Um, Zero, zero, zero combination. There was no ammunition in that case, correct? No, there was not. But you did find ammunition in the same location. Yes, yeah, so I, I guess you can't see it, but um, it was underneath the. Um, so I'm moving yeah, to you can kind of see where the two magazines are. There's a box behind it. The, the like gray, a, red, and black. Yeah, yep, that's the box to uh, ammunition. I don't recall what specific uh, caliber was recovered, but it was a box with ammunition. It's right behind the. Uh, the holster right there. Okay. I've nothing further, Thank you. So you can step down and you're excused. Thank you.